the ocarina. An instrument that most people had never heard about in America until The Legend of Zelda brought it to prominence in the West. Maybe you've been scrolling through the internet before and you've seen one of these ocarinas pop up for sale. And if you're anything like me, you're thinking to yourself, well, I kind of want one of those. Well, I don't $40 want one of those. So that's where the beauty of 3D printing comes in. If you or one of your friends owns a 3D printer, you can print an ocarina for under $3. If you go to thingiverse.com, you can find ocarinas of all shapes and sizes to print out. So the question is, what's the best ocarina to print out for someone who's never played before? Well, I printed a bunch out so you don't have to. I'll show you the printing process and we'll hear from an expert as to which one's the best. For this video, I chose four ocarinas I found on Thingiverse. First, this 12-hole soprano by Karuv, this 4-hole ocarina by Segibop, this pendant ocarina by 3E8, and finally this 12-hole ocarina by Rob Soundtrack. For the tiny soprano ocarina, I tried again and again and again, but I couldn't get it to print. I was having this issue where it'd be porous and have all these holes, so when you tried to play it, it would just sound like air was coming out. I tried different printer settings, different print orientations, and even different materials, but nothing seemed to work. I kid you not, I printed out almost 10 ocarinas until I figured out what was going wrong. Finally, after a close inspection of my 3D printer, I found out the issue was with the nozzle. This is a 0.4mm nozzle, and it should look like this. But after a year of operation, the nozzle was grinded down to the point where the opening was a lot bigger than it should be. So after swapping out the nozzles, I finally got a clean and working product. Next, the 4-hole ocarina. I actually printed this one out before I fixed my nozzle, and it was working just fine, but it looked kinda ugly. So I did a little bit of sanding with 200 grit sandpaper, and it made it feel a little better, but it still didn't look super great. But it was functional, so I called it a day. Next up, the Pendant Ocarina, and it printed out really nicely with no need for supports. And I'm very happy that it came out looking all shiny and clean. With the 12-hole Ocarina, you just need to give it enough wall thickness and support, and it's a pretty easy print. Looks pretty good! Now, all of these Ocarinas were working but I'm clearly no expert, as you can hear. I had to know from an ocarina expert which one was the best. So I packed them all up in a box and shipped them to my friend Andy, who lives in San Francisco. All right, now that the shipment has been received, I'm joined by my good friend Andy. Andy, want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Andy. I belong to the uh, United States Ocarina Ensemble, also known as Okabanda. I've been playing the ocarina for 10 years, and I'm really excited to test out these 3D printed ocarinas. So Andy, I think the idea here is I would like to hear you test all the ocarinas and pick what you think is the best one. Got it. So pick all the ocarinas, find the best one. Let's start with uh, this one. So this in fact is an actual ocarina. This design is based off of the design that was made popular by Songbird Ocarina back in the heyday of Nintendo Power. There's four holes on front and one hole on the back for a total of five holes. Let's see if this plays as well as it looks. It's a bit weak, it's very airy, and it's not particularly in tune on the high notes, and you can't even hit the highest note, but it's in tune enough to do one single scale, which, for something 3D printed, that's a, this is a good start. Um, this is gonna be what we're measuring against. This, this might be rough going, going for it. Let's try to play the Song of Time on this one. In any case, let's move on to the second docarina. Let's do the other pendant. So this right here is a six hole ocarina with four holes on the front, two holes on the back. Very similar fingering pattern to the one that I just played. This is quite smooth. Like if you're looking at the, my key light reflecting off of it, you're getting a really nice clean line. That's very smooth. So let's see if it plays as smooth as it looks. That also got a scale! 
Um, so one note for this one, um, the uh, fibble hole, the sound hole that comes out, isn't perfectly in line with uh, the mouthpiece. So let's uh, try to play the song a time on this one. You know, what I have to say is, I find it really impressive that you're able to move throughout all these different hole configurations on the fly. Yeah, um, I, I'm definitely less comfortable with pendant ocarinas, which is why I'm doing those ones first. <laughs> to get, just get them out of the way. But, I, I've, I've been playing the ocarina for 10 years, I have 12 hole ocarinas, I have 10 hole ocarinas, I have 6 hole ocarinas, 8 hole ocarinas. Um, triple ocarinas, double ocarinas. There's just so many different types of ocarinas that once you learn just the baseline uh, transverse, which is this orientation, and pendant, then you can pretty much play all of them with just a little bit of adjustment. For number three, we will be doing what looks like to be a 12-hole soprano ocarina. Um, this one is actually appears to be based off of this one right here by uh, Songbird Ocarina. So if I get them both relatively in focus, you can tell that they're very similar shape, very similar hole placement, both on the front and on the back. But this is a really good ocarina, so I have high hopes for this one. Test number one. The low notes are all good, so going from the A, It is playable, but the high notes, which are the like the power notes on a soprano ocarina, they 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 they're just airy. Um, I'm sure that the test ocarinas probably couldn't play any notes, and for making an an ocarina this small and this like difficult to 3D print, that's impressive. It's just it cannot play all the notes, sadly. So uh, let's see how much of a song of time I can play. If, if the note doesn't come out, I'll just keep going. Not bad. If Link were to actually play that in the game and the high notes were super airy, do you think he, like, he would work back, but only like halfway back in time to his original position? Be like, he'd just be like, rather than being like a uh, young Link or adult Link, he'd be like moody teenager Link. Like his voice is breaking as he's scrying. <laughs> Let's move on to the 12 hole ocarina in an alto key. I don't know the exact key, but I've tested it and it seems to be in tune. Let's play the Song of Time on this one as well. Um, if I were to rank these ocarinas from worst to best, tied for worst, almost, we have the uh, round smooth boy and the small blue boy. However, um, the round small boy is much harder to play and while it does have a fuller tone than the small blue boy, the round one is the most difficult to play in terms of both mouth positioning and breath pressure, so sadly, because of that, I have to rank it as the worst. The uh, soprano ocarina, while it is missing half of an octave of range and it can only play one octave and not even like a major scale, it's pretty easy to play. You don't need that much in terms of breath pressure adjustments. So because you get more functional notes out of this one, um, this one does edge out the round boy. Now, for the top two, they look pretty similar in shape, but they're very different. This one, while it did have relatively airy notes, it was easy to play, and the ergonomics were just totally fine. This was a good ocarina, for a 3D printed ocarina. So this is the second best one, and of course, the uh, Alto 12-hole boy. Um, this one was super easy to play. It functioned at the level of like an ocarina that you might even buy from like an actual ocarina company. So the fact that you can just 3D print this, that is wild, and if you just need an expendable ocarina to uh, learn how to play the instrument on, 
Um, I can't not recommend this. Of course, I would recommend something like um, The Night by Noble More, which is a legit, very good plastic ocarina, and there's no chance that it'll be bad. But otherwise, um, this one's great. Andy, that was so good. It sounded just like in the game. I want an encore out of this ocarina. I don't know, man. Um, what do you suggest? I suggest that everybody subscribes to Andy on YouTube. The link is right here, right there. I, the, the buttons are right there. The buttons are on the one corner or in the description or when I comment on the video. Two sentence minimum per comment. Yeah, I, I, I expect full essays in the comments. I will be grading them. All right, let's hear that encore. Again, special thanks to my friend Andy for helping me out on this video. If you want a better explanation as to why some of these ocarinas are good or bad, you can check out his video below. It should be live now. So yes, the 12 hole ocarina is the winner. It probably has something to do with the fact that this model in particular has gone through multiple iterations to make sure it sounds right. But there's a chance that some of these might have sounded a bit better too if I had tweaked some settings and did some more experimentation. Well, that's it for this video. If you got this far, leave a comment below as to what your favorite looking ocarina was today. I'm Big Rig, and I hope you keep trucking on.